It's 11.20. This is On The Hour. On The Hour. Such is politics. It's a painful business. On The Hour. What you mustn't do in politics is listen to people. It's a painful business. On Radio 4. Such is politics. Well, the Germans have always been unenthusiastic about parallel currencies. On The Hour with Christopher Morris. Good morning. The main story is tonight. The headlines. More oxygen needed, says France. Will all paper be continuous? And Anorak Tuesday under threat, declares Primate. On the hour. And later, we ask Foreign Secretary Douglas Hurd if that is likely to happen. No, I don't think that that is likely to happen. Plus, speaking from the House of Commons ping-pong chamber, Prime Minister John Major expresses outrage at the decision by the Rugby Football Union to abolish prop forwards. That is also Michael's position, it is Douglas's position, it is my position. It is a position held by every member of the Cabinet. But first the news. Residents of Brixton woke this morning to see the streets literally swarming with hard-faced convicts. But, according to officials, there was no need to worry. It was simply an escape for charity the brainchild of Home Secretary Kenneth Baker and prison warden David Spreckley. Some of the prisoners had expressed concern over the depletion of the Amazon rainforest, said Mr Spreckley, and I thought, what better way to help than have a sponsored mass breakout? At 7 o'clock this morning, the doors were opened, the warders turned their backs for 45 minutes, and prisoners paraded out of the gates in colourful fancy dress. They are under strict instructions to return by evening prayers. At home... The Conservative Party's central office has once again flatly refused to speculate over the precise date of the next general election. However, they did agree to leave a series of cryptic clues at undisclosed locations around the country. The Pound. Sterling today, 7, 2, 50 and 5. On the hour with Christopher Morris and other reporter presenters. It's 27 minutes to, time to go over to the Green Desk for some environmental news. Green Desk. Environmental news with me, Rosie May. The organisers of the 200-mile Malvern to Mafstead whale walk have fallen at the first hurdle. That's because whales can't walk and find almost any form of motion on land beyond their capabilities. Environmental news. If it's green, we'll cover it. Rosie May, getting the measure of matters green. A kind of green gauge, if you like. Um, later, who pays for our cheese? But first, the unspeakably awful and filthy world of police corruption. A special report now from our reporter, Gavin Strength. In a surprise development, it was announced this morning that the Special Investigations Unit of Greater Doncaster's Police Force was to be disbanded. The region's chief constable, Sir Michael Cog Lucifer, explained the move. We investigated the West Dorset Flying Squad and we found out that uh, they were completely innocent. Indeed, those who had given evidence against the Flying Squad, 350 members of the public, we then found were guilty. And what evidence do you have against these 350 people? None of them were churchgoers. Uh, we know that. Does we... that mean that they're guilty, that they don't go oh, to church? No, but we have asked them whether they do go to church, and they have all claimed they do not. And I, I believe that is more than coincidence. For one man in particular, the news that the unit is to be disbanded could spell the end of a ten-year nightmare. Lionel Cosgrave is a 23-year-old local pizza delivery man. I've just grown to notice over, over the years. I, I seem to have spent rather a lot of time being arrested, uh, interrogated, thrown in prison, and I don't know why. Could you tell me what was your first arrest, Lionel? I was charged with impersonating a, a Chelsea pensioner. Though I was in the area at the time, a Chelsea, uh, I, I can't do many impersonations. Well, well I, I, I can do Michael Crawford. Lionel Cosgrave, guilty Cosgrave, has been indeed arrested 46 times. Could you tell me a little bit about your forensic scientist, Freddie Vincent? Dr Freddie Vincent. I don't actually think he is a doctor. No, he's not, but he calls himself one, and who are we to disillusion the lad? He's a young man, he's a God-fearing man, a man who, in his own words, cacks himself before the Lord, and I respect that and I admire it. I talked to Dr Vincent in his home laboratory. Um, bearing in mind the training that most forensic scientists have in this field, would you not say that you're a little bit young to be dealing with matters of this importance? Well, that's not the first time that allegation you know, has been put to me. And, uh, and I've got a reply for that every time. Uh, which is, uh, you know, how old was William Pitt the Younger? I've been arrested for, for like, uh, charged with fitting up uh, 
terrorist bombings, poisoning wells. And what uh, actual evidence do they use against you for these crimes? Apparently they found my blood all over policemen's fists and, and boots. Uh, and apparently my fingerprints have been found uh, all over my hands. I question this, this forensicness myself. You can always sort of make something look like something else. If I take a football and uh, paint it green, you might say, oh, it's a giant pea. But, you know, scrape away the paint and, you know, underneath, oh dear me, it's a football. Freddie Vincent, Dr Vincent, presents the evidence to a committee, myself, and I decide who is uh, to be tried. And who else is on this committee? I've just told you. Just you? Myself and my conscience. There is a bloke called um, Lionel Cosgrove. Yeah. Well, yes, I was about to come on to Lionel yeah. Cosgrove. Guilty I mean... Lionel. <laughs> Lionel Guilty Cosgrave. Yeah. Could you, could you give me some proof that you actually found against Lionel? I mean, how do you know that Lionel was, in fact, a bomb maker? Uh, well, this is interesting. Ink was found on swabs taken from his fingers. And ink, believe it or not, is one of the most vital parts in making of bombs. But ink can come from a number of things. I mean, what about pens, for instance? Uh, I, think, I think we're splitting hairs at this point. I mean, that... What kind of pens? Corruption is like a plague, and if you don't lance it, uh, like a boil, it can spread like uh, some form of satanic cancer. And what do you mean by cancer? Some sort of illness? Well, a disease, certainly. Potentially. In what form does this disease take? Well, your hair falls out and your skin flakes off. No, I'm talking about the actual corruption of the police. Oh, uh, sorry. On the hour. Maximum use of the BBC's news resources. In 47 seconds, sports news, but first there's been mixed reaction to the news that pedestrians are to be banned from Cambridge City Centre. The council ruling follows concern over congestion in the city's increasingly crowded streets. Market traders are up in arms, claiming that already recession-hit trade will dry up completely if no one is allowed to walk within half a mile of their stalls. But the council are unrepentant. There's no pleasing these tossers, said a spokesman this morning. You clear the streets so they can unload their vans and they turn around and crap in your face. This is Sports Desk. I'm Alan Partridge. Formula One driver Nigel Mansell gave up motor racing this week as it's too dangerous. And anyway, claims Mansell, I can get the same sensation by sitting in a wind tunnel with dark glasses on and a paper bag of agitated wasps tied over my head. Time now for the On The Hour campaign. This week, it's prompted by woefully inadequate public understanding of basic health issues. Don't catch a disease. What sort of disease did you catch recently? Well, oh, flu. How do you feel about being one of the dim and feckless individuals who didn't avoid catching a disease? Uncomfortable, bad. You, you feel rotten. You must feel bad about it. What sort of disease did you catch recently? Oh, um, flu. What clearly rather hopeless measures did you take to stop yourself catching a disease? Oh, I didn't take any measures at all. Do you have any idea how you could avoid becoming again one of those bad idiots that goes around catching a disease? No. Actually, having a health campaign reminds me of a time when I had to read out a story about a member of the royal family who was ill, and I said that she was 111. <laughs> Serious tone of voice. There's been a large disaster at Big Street Station. Details are sketchy, but it seems that a train ran into the buffers at 8.13 this morning during a rush hour crowded with commuters. And Transport Police have just issued this description of what happened. And... Can you repeat that, please? In collision event occurred when the VPU... Was it love? ...vehicular power unit... Can you repeat that, please? ...proposed an IAV... Was it ...inappropriate arrival velocity... Can you repeat that, please? ...to the IAHTS... Was it love? ...impact absorbing hydraulic trumpet system. Was it love? Thank you. On the hour, first on the scene at major disasters. Our disaster correspondent, Roger Blatt, is on the scene at the moment. 
Roger, what are you looking at? I'm looking at some large bits of twisted metal which just an hour ago was a train with people on it, none of whom had ordered the morning menu of mayhem they were about to be served. An hors d'oeuvre of loud bangs, a shriek of tortured metal with a side order of shattering panel, and for dessert, great cries of dismay and concern expressed by the victims. I'm not, could you be quiet, please? Roger Blatt reporting. Uh, now, as a result of the crash, Radio 1 are running a Disaster Day special. Let's join them now for an update. And it's Wayne Carr, I believe. Um, hello, Wayne. The loudest hello. bangs from the biggest hello. disasters. Hello. OK, Wayne Carr, WC on the radio, with a full Rockarama news banana to follow on that train trash trash. Got to say, sounds like a sounds like a bit of a nightmare there on Big Street today. <laughs> just a bit of a bit of a joke there to cheer you on if you had a death in the family or just lost someone that you love in the amazing bogey bash. No, that can be tough. And don't forget, we're going live for a civil cast with the Corduroy Boys on Radio 4 in next to no time, OK? Really looking forward to that. Could be my lucky day. If I play my cards right, I could land the guest presentation spot on a light weight news-based quiz program. Meanwhile, we're going all the way back with the music, and I see Dave Edmonds is still crawling from the wreckage. On the hour, disaster news update on the serious crash at Big Street Station. Reporters looking for an eyewitness have found a single man in his mid-twenties with an off-the-peg suit and a dull but adequate career in computers. Well, the first I knew, there was a huge bang and glass flying everywhere. I couldn't believe it. Just like they said it would be in the advert. Look, page 38, Eyewitness Monthly. I've only had this copy a fortnight. Great value, isn't it? Am I on the nine o'clock? This is telly, isn't it? On the hour, catastrophe special reactions. And British Rail say they will launch an immediate investigation into the crash to decide they have nothing at all to do with trains and anyway they're underfunded. And if you're driving in the Big Street area, expect delays from the build-up of heavy traffic as frontbench politicians and current by-election candidates converge on the station and then tear off to nearby hospitals in an effort to appear on the same news bulletin twice. And we go back to the scene now with Roger Blatt. And as you join me, some of the victims are being dragged Super. out. And one more time, please, love. It's yeah. for a second time, time, actually. There wasn't enough light yeah. for the cameras on the first take. Could you sob a bit louder, please? More yeah. sobbing. Yeah. I'm afraid what you're hearing is Super. typical of modern television journalism. Wave your stumps and action. What they're doing is simply obstructing me please. from asking valuable yeah. questions. Don't die yet, please. Uh, the, the listener wants oh, to hear. The amateurs, don't uh, die. Excuse me. Sorry, uh, you're critically yeah. injured with a shattered stop. pelvis pneumothorax and partially torn off face. How do you feel? On the hour. Disaster plus. Just coming up to four and twenty, and weekend PM special tonight comes live from the besieged home of a maintenance man who will be speculatively blamed in a few hours' time, reduced to a gibbering wreck by six months of press harassment, and found extremely responsible for everything in about a year from now so that everyone else can carry on as if nothing had happened. On the hour. Modern yet palatable news presentation. In a moment, the on-the-hour audio pullout is the sound package which follows the sports insert. But first, we're getting news of chaos for drivers on the A1 as today's high temperatures cause the road to buckle. The Northumbrian stretch between Durham and Newcastle has been found in Shropshire. The A1M at Doncaster is now part of the Telford Bypass. And seven miles of the congested Lincolnshire section have bent due east as far as Norwich and are expected to reach the North Sea by midnight. This is Sports Desk. I'm Alan Partridge. Athletics and sprinter Linford Christie has withdrawn from tomorrow's Crystal Palace meeting in Oslo, blaming groin injury. The problem centres on possible tearing in the lower skin and a slight severing of dry tissue from the genital wall. Apparently, seven connective membranes have been stretched and three have come loose, causing the inner sac to chafe against the muscle for the third time this season. Thanks very much indeed there to Alan Partridge. And later in the programme, but first, time for the audio pullout. On the hour, the audio pullout. Get Hip and Go, the stylish style guide for stylish young people aged 39 or under. Get Hip and Go. And now the Get Hip and Go quick guide to... Dublin. Currently European city of culture and yet a vital and modern home to both antiquities, folklore and, of course, a decent point of my old Dublin. Is a city of contrast. Here, the brand new skateboard park nestles neatly beside the old skateboard park. Young Pat Riley is part of the new breed of Dublin. Uh. 
Working as a video director was always the kind of job you could only do in London or LA. That's a. The Los Irish punt is worth a hundred no, pounds sterling. Uh, there's Terry Wogan, Dr. Anthony Clare. Mm. Uh, Who else have you worked with? Uh, well, nobody at all yet, to tell the truth. Only 32% of all Dubliners have heard of patio doors, soft contact lenses, or the pet shop boys. James Joyce, Yeats. Oh, kiss the blarney stone, will you? 99% of young Dubliners own a helicopter. 67% of women own two helicopters. Oh, Danny Boy, Sinead O'Connor. Mm -hmm. Top of the morning. Swimming is illegal. Uh, there's Guinness, uh, Potato Famine, of course, Jackie Charles. Mm -hmm. To vote in Ireland, you must own at least four dogs. Pomer Iranians do not count. And of course, Chief Mengist do put a lazy. Are we on the air, sugar? Sir. Sir. I. Oh. Style. What is? Sir. Sir. I. Oh. Get hip and go asks various eminent leaders of fashion and culture to tell us what is. Sir. Sir. I. Oh. I think the test as seed of style is that those with style never talk about it much. Um, style is James Dean, um, Marilyn Monroe, Sarah Brightman. Well, I suppose style's um, listening to Smokey Robinson at two o'clock in the morning and um, with a glass of rolling rock in one hand and uh, Isabella Gianni on the other. Ah, uh, style is what you want it to be. Style is... Never what you want it to be. Well, it's a, it's a wooden thing that helps you get over a fence. Leaves. 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 The Leaf Valley France, where each year the peasants pick the leaves one by one, stalk by stem, as they have for hundreds of years. Leaves. They are leaves. November. The Leaf Valley Leaf Tide Leaf Festival. The leaf dance is done, and at its climax, a hundred of the leaves are cast to the wind. Leaves. They are some leaves. And now you too can share in this ancient beauty with your own stylishly, individually wrapped leaves. Les leaves naturels de leaf. Toss them, throw them, gather them in your own garden or home to the envy and delight of your neighbours. Crumpled, withered English leaves will never seem so attractive again. Les leaves naturels de leaf. Leaves. Some leaves. Twelve ninety nine per leaf. Also available in large bags. Now the Get Hip and Go Quick Guide to Berlin. It's in Germany. On the hour, the audio pullout is now complete. Which doesn't fart when you take the meter. Welcome back. Reports coming up in the next 40 minutes. We find out if Douglas Hurd supports the the um of uh 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 in which uh. We support the the um uh, of uh, uh in which uh. And how a last minute rewrite has helped the archers accommodate the release of hostage John McCarthy. How could you do it to your poor old father? Leave me to do the milk and... When I could have been celebrating the release of hostage John McCarthy. Joe, sit down. Come on. You don't look well. But first, the news. A Safeway's bag stuffed with over 200 kilos of pure cocaine was handed into a Humberside police station late last night by beachcomber Alec French. Police said this morning the cocaine had an estimated street value of £33,000 million. I'm staggered, said Mr French. It's been in the family for years and no one thought it would fetch sixpence. Gynecology. The sperm count today, low, southerly, increasing five to seven, moderate, good. On the hour, health check. How do you feel about the increasing incidence of horizontal disease? Very, very sad indeed. Which angle of disease most worries you? 180, I would think. Which is worse, a horizontal disease or a vertical disease? Horizontal, I should think. Why? Definitely, because with a vertical, which is where you're going to be here, I would find a wall or a thing like that, and I would just stand there and hold it. How do you feel about the recent outbreak of horizontal diseases? Well, I think it's inevitable with the pressures we live under today. Do you feel the information is being suppressed at all? Yes. Who by? The same people who suppress all other information in this country. This is the most suppressed country on Earth. How would you respond if you were confronted in a fisticuff situation with a horizontal disease? Or... Well, because of my past, I would learn to accept it philosophically. You'd work it out in Nietzschean terms, perhaps? Oh, yeah. Of all the angles of disease in the world, which do you fear the most? 
180. What about a 35 degree disease? How frightened do you feel of that? Acceptable. Acceptable. 78 degrees? Tell me you did something about it. And by the time you get to 360 degrees, well, you're going back where you started. It's 38 minutes to. Over now to sport. We haven't got it. Um, right. Uh, well, perhaps um, we could go over now to Senny Power and hear what's happening with the week on four. Who's supposed to be doing that bloody sport? And the week on four begins on Thursday at 3.15 with Afternoon Theatre. Another chance to hear Susan's regrets, winner of this year's Sonic Daisy Award for Best Use of Sound. Mary has got some sugar, but Gerald has problems closer to home. Ah, tea and cake, Gerald. Ah, uh, yes, please, darling. I've come about the sugar. And you can hear Mary's reply on Thursday afternoon. On Saturday at 5pm, there's a start of a new series of With a Shotgun in My Mouth. Controversial psychiatrist Dr Anthony Clare straps public figures to a wooden chair in a disused warehouse and forces them to reveal embarrassing childhood secrets by putting a shotgun in their mouth. This week, risking a mouthful of pellets, is the Duchess of Kent. Earlier on Saturday at 12.25, there's a special three-hour edition of I'm Sorry I Have to Appear in This Programme. Right, Graham and Barry's team. You have to sing The Girl from Ipanema, but Barry has to sing every third word and Graham has to sing all the others. But Barry has to sing Counterpane for all the words... And Graham, you have to sing bottom instead, OK? Go. Bottom, bottom, counterpain. Bottom, bottom, <laughs> counterpain. Bottom, bottom. More fun at 7.20 this evening when analysis returns with Mary Goldring. With Gorbachev squaring up to hardliners, what hope for the steel industry? Is the West ready to do a deal with the East? And how will this affect Britain's schools? With the national curriculum in its infancy, who will challenge Bush for the 1992 White House? And will he have the courage to replace Liverpool's roads? Mary Goldring will be in a chair at 7.20 this evening. On Tuesday morning at a different time, we eavesdrop on the real-life world of anglers. This week, Anglers follows Keith Stafford as he stalks the banks of the Wandsbeck. Anglers at 10.30 on Tuesday on Radio 4 FM. On long wave at that time, we go over live to the Guildhall, Westminster, for full coverage of the beheading of Rabbi Lionel Blue. On the hour, the face of reason in August and September. A note from the post office, birthdays this week, don't forget the final posting day is Wednesday. And I think now we can go back to the sports news with Alan Partridge. Green Desk. Last year there were 200 million raindrops in the UK. This year there were only 190 million. If you want to know how you can help save our raindrops, then ring 0898 225522 and ask about adoption. Green Desk. Last year there were 500 types of wood in Hampshire. This year there are 600. If you know who's been leaving types of wood in Hampshire, then leave a message on 0898 235523. Closing music. And there's just time to look at tomorrow's headlines. The Times, more oxygen still needed, say the French. There's a picture of Mr. Meter on there. The Telegraph opt for Meat Man in commando-style soap attack. The Mail lead with Dead Rhino blows through Glasgow. The Star stick with Slow Motion Stunt Man in Leg Fury. That's for the second day running. And Alleluia Warden in Songfest Barge Torment. That's the Express. And that's it. Just remains for me to say, take this... Uh, right.